Hello, I'm Jayadev Acharya and I'm going to talk about uh, distributed first order optimization and the question of whether adaptive processing of gradients can help. This work will appear in uh, NeurIPS 2021. It's a joint work with uh, Clamo Canon, Prathamesh Mayakar and Himanshu Tyagi. Prathamesh was the workforce behind uh, this work and uh, his, uh, the bulk of uh, what I'm going to present is uh, Prathamesh is doing. <laughs> The framework in which we are going to study the problem was introduced by Nemirovsky and Yudin, the Oracle model, in which uh, our goal is to minimize an unknown function f over some domain calligraphic x. And in each iteration, the algorithm, algorithm pi is going to query a point x sub t to this gradient access oracle. And the oracle is going to return a noisy subgradient estimate of g hat of x t. And the goal is to design pi for the best convergence rate. So we want to design the algorithms that's going to choose these query points in order to come up with the fastest possible convergence. So pictorially, this is how it looks like. You have the function pi, or uh, you have the algorithm pi that's going to query xt at each time to an oracle O that's going to return g hat of xt. What we want to study today is in first order optimization with information constraints. So these will be the settings in which you do not have direct access to G hat of XT. For example, think of uh, many different machines and in each round, you are going to query one of the machines. So XT will be queried to the TF machine and then it has to send back the gradient. And due to several reasons, such as let's say communication constraints, you cannot observe the precise gradient estimate. <laughs> and only a small uh, amount of information about the gradient can be passed back from the machines to you. So this can be pictorially drawn, uh, shown here, where in each round, the gradient estimate G hat passes through a channel WT, which denotes your information constraints, and you only get to see the output YT of these channels. And the question we want to ask is, does adaptively choosing these channels or the gradient uh, coding schemes help. And uh, cases where uh, some of the examples of these uh, information constraints are local differential privacy, where each time the channel that you choose must privatize the gradient estimates, communication constraints, where you just don't have enough bandwidth to send back the entire gradient and you must send only R bits of information, or uh, random coordinate descent, where you compute the gradient, but you can only compute one of the coordinates of the gradient and send it back due to, let's say, communication, uh, computation constraints. The kind of functions we consider are uh, the following. We'll consider functions f, which are convex over a domain x of uh, diameter d. The oracles that we consider are unbiased and have bounded norm. And uh, the goal is to minimize uh, the excess uh, risk or is to minimize the expected value of the function after t iterations with respect to the true minima. And without information constraints, it's known that uh, the uh, expected uh, loss is uh, uh, d times b over square root of t, expected uh, distance to the minima. In our work, we prove the following lower bounds on local uh, on the convergence rates uh, depending on local uh, for local differentially private uh, information constraints for communication constraints and for random coordinate descent. What we show is that in each of these three cases, there is a blow up that happens, and we are able to characterize that blow up even when adaptive gradient processing is allowed. And in fact, these bounds are all tight and they are achieved by non-adaptive schemes. So in other words, the upper bounds are achieved by non-adaptive schemes and lower bounds by, and the lower bounds we prove hold even when you allow for adaptivity. Agarwal, Bartlett, uh, Ravi Kumar and Wainwright to prove lower bounds without information constraints. Ducci, Jordan and Wainwright uh, proven uh, lower bounds for uh, local differentially private uh, channels. However, they prove it only for non-adaptive schemes. <laughs> and Rich Tarik and Takash proved it, uh, pro prove these results for uh, random coordinate descent. 
After proving these uh, results for convex functions, we consider strongly convex functions and uh, show that even their adaptive processing of gradients does not help. However, it's a much more uh, challenging problem, partly because our uh, hard function class for convex functions are actually linear functions. And for uh, strongly convex function, it turns out that unlike linear functions whose gradient uh, may not depend on the exact location where we are uh, taking the gradient at, for strongly convex functions, they do. And this leads to a bunch of uh, interesting hurdles that we have to pass. So this shows that both for convex and strongly convex functions, adaptive processing of gradients do not help. And we want to ask, uh, are there questions where adaptive processing helps for some nice uh, class of questions? And we show yes. And we uh, consider this uh, following question where x is, the set x is plus minus, uh, minus one, one to the d. And the function f v of x is just x minus v to norm square. Okay. The distance from of x from v squared. So clearly this function is minimized at uh, v and we consider the vectors v to be s block sparse. In other words, at most a block of s entries of v are non-zero. Moreover, those s entries are all consecutively located. Okay, so you have uh, d coordinates in x at most s of them can be non-zero and those s coordinates must be next to each other. In the oracle, we consider outputs two times uh, xt minus zt, where zts are iid with expected value v. It's easy to see that this is an unbiased estimate with uh, bounded <coughs> norm. And the channels we consider are these uh, coordinate descent channels. In other words, you can only send information about one coordinate of this oracle output. When you have non-adaptive processing, the method by which you are going to send, select which channel, you are, which coordinate uh, you are going to send back is fixed ahead of time. Okay, so you don't choose it adaptively. You are not going to adaptively choose in each round which coordinate, uh, which coordinate you are going to send back. But when you allow for adaptive processing, then in each round, you can select which coordinate to send back. And when you have block sparse uh, vectors V, then it's, uh, uh, then we show that if you can adaptively choose which, get, which, uh, which coordinates to uh, send, then you can come up with a better rate. So without adaptive processing, the uh, rate is d times s over t. Whereas if you allow for uh, adaptive processing, it becomes d plus s square over t. So for example, if uh, s is the square root of d, then uh, non-adaptive processing gives, to, gives rise to d to the 3 over 2 over t. Whereas adaptive processing uh, gives us uh, uh, d over t. So in conclusion, adaptive gradient coding does not help for standard optimization tasks under information constraints, such as communication, privacy. However, for problems where there is a structure, we show that adaptivity can help. Thank you.